I hear that. I do want to actually get back to even more of a fundamental question, and I'm sorry mm. I didn't ask this. Sure. What is a woman? Oh. A woman is somebody who presents as our social conception of womanhood, so you, acts in such a way. So Pixie, just can you answer that question without using the word woman or womanhood? It's because basically it would be a functional definition. So as a society, we have an understanding of what woman is. What it's is a that? Man. Yeah, that's basically. I am a man. Well done. <laughs> X, Can you X, X Y chromosomes. Okay, but the problem with that is that I didn't check your chromosomes before coming in here and calling you a man, and you didn't check my chromosomes before coming in here or genitals or genitals, <laughs> calling me a woman. So let me let me just play this out. So first of all, you can't give me a definition without using the word woman. That's a functional definition. Yeah, sure. Do you okay. know what functional definitions yeah, I, are? I'm, I'm very well aware, and you should have a functional definition for the most important question in civilization, no. right? Well, the Don't point know, of a functional definition, it, functional definitions are a definition that is by the function of something. So like, for example, um, no, there's an objective one equals definition. one is like a, like fun, one is a function of one. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I do. So then can you give me an objective, a functional, utilitarian, any sort of biological definition of what a woman is? Because how, how can we debate feminism if we can't agree what a woman is? I don't, I would even, like, I feel like Pixie's definition absolutely satisfies the definition of what constitutes womanhood, but I would define it only slightly differently, which is that it's a person who performs a set of social roles that are typically associated with, um, with feminine characteristics, but not necessarily, because there are even cis women who fall outside of this, and we still consider them women nonetheless, like butch lesbians, for example, are women that exhibit very masculine characteristics, but nonetheless, society understands them to be women, so. I find cis to be a very offensive word, by the way. I don't know mm -hmm. how you feel about the cis, cis I don't, men, I don't, th cis I don't think, I don't I think, think it's hate speech, to be honest. I didn't mean to trigger you, Brian. As, I would have given a, you a trigger warning before if so I had known. So do you think anyone can become a woman? Yep. But not anyone will. Okay, so then at what point do they become a woman? It will depend on where they are in their gender transition for the does most it, part. Does it require drugs to become a woman? No. Personally, I think it's a mindset. It's a, it's a spiritual oh. energy. It's, it's the vibe that you give off. You know, like the the vibe. Um, before we continue on, I want to just give everyone an opportunity yeah, to sorry, answer Charlie. Sure, no, totally fine to answer Charlie's question. I know you two had already answered. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is a woman? Starting with you, we'll go around the table. Go ahead. Um, ooh, can you um, skip me? <laughs> we'll yeah, come back yeah, to her. I, I am a woman. That's, yeah. a, that's the best answer. That's the one that <laughs> Katanji Brown Jackson should have given in front of the Senate. So come back to you? Or? Yeah, come back to me. Come back to me. Let me Sure, okay. Go ahead. Same. I'm like, I'm a woman. What is know. a woman? <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> what about you? Can I have you tilt your mic down just yeah, a tad? Of Perfect. Go ahead. Right there. Yeah. Um, I'm a woman, um, but I also do think that um, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. Um, and that's, that's that. I mean, Theoretically, it's someone who's born with a womb, but this generation obviously has proven that people, men, can turn into women. Um, so I'm not discluding that. I still think that they should be um, perceived as what they're um, portraying themselves as. But technically, I still think trans girls, they are a version of a man, but they can still be classed as a woman, which is a bit tricky, but yeah, yeah. Molly? Um. I'll say the same answer. I think I think what constitutes as a woman is the energy that you give off and that you want to put out into the world. Hmm. So if being a woman or a female is a mindset, can your age also be a mindset? Can you choose to be, can you just say, I feel 14, which is a classifiable mental condition, by the way, of in it. So I... I will say, um, yes, I know people that act way younger than they actually are, and they love acting way younger than they actually are, and I know people that, you know, like, act way older than they are, and they, you know, and they pride themselves in that, and I think... Okay, fair enough. So if a 35-year-old man claims he's 14, should we have any problem if he wants to have sex with another 14-year-old? No, no, no. I'm not saying no, that you should... No, probably should have a problem, I think. No, no, I'm not well, saying that they should be problem. able to have sex, but... But you, they but can, they who's can to say state, he's not 14? I feel 14. Right. They have to state that. Okay. Grid One Motorsports donated $200. The man who owns it paid oh. himself 1,3 mil a day last year. He loves feminism. Oh, okay. Today, men act in female can be better women than real women. 
Feminism has failed you. How can the patriarchy help that, you today? That was beautiful, Grid One. Thank you. Appreci appreciate it. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's yeah. Um, so, going but, back. But if your identity can is an energy or a feeling that can change, why would it be wrong for a 35 year old to say he's 14? Therefore, because he's not. But then, how is someone who has male parts? A woman, if he's I not feel a like woman, that's two different things. It's why? It's a, it's a mindset, back isn't in it? Time. Your age isn't a mindset. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, but, like, but then why is why is your sex or your gender a mindset and your because, age isn't? I don't know which one is which. One of you could probably well, say, sex, but sex and do gender you agree? Is different. At least acknowledge that sex and gender are two separate that, things. So that's what I was going to say. There are zero genders, two sexes, and infinite personalities. Well, okay. Well, gender okay. doesn't exist. No. What do you mean? Okay. Sex does. So the parts you're born with is who you are. How does gender not exist? It's a, it's a 1960s clinical term largely made out of the Academy of John clinical? Money and Alfred Kinsey and many postmodern child psychiatrists, many of whom, by the way, were not really great people, but we don't have to go into that. But gender is a, a new term of the last 50 or 60 years. So, yeah, but it still exists. But personalities exist. We can agree with that. Proclivities or interests or likes exist. So do by you, that definition, then... You're, if you're a woman or a man, is your energy. It is your personality. Well, yeah, you're, the, the goal, or what used to be the case, is the vast, vast, vast majority, 99.9% .9 of all people, their biology and their reality, or their, how they viewed their reality, I should say, were in alignment, and now that's not so much the case. So the people are, first of all, there's many elements to this. People are told that they can become something they can't, so they go on a very, very... Um, damaging self-destructive pattern of medical interventions that even if you're pro-trans you have to acknowledge that you know a hysterectomy at age 17 is not exactly an easy surgery I don't for, think anyone at 17 should be altering their body oh, but no I agree yeah. um, it's just it's happening right now at a thousands of young kids across the country are getting um, what is called gender affirming care, gender affirming care, but it's irreversible care or damage. surgeries. Both. So puberty blockers and hormone There's blockers. There's thousands of kids that are getting hysterectomies across no, the United States. No, thousands of kids are getting puberty blockers or hormone block or so hormone blockers or puberty blockers. You Probably could, even more. You tens could, of thousands. You could stop using and, those. And and as far as breast reduction surgery or hysterectomies, we don't know the number, but I'll even say it's probably only a couple dozen. It's probably you're right. It's probably not thousands. Right. But. It's any, we don't know the exact numbers, but an estimate is anywhere between ten to 15,000 minors and is growing are currently receiving monthly doses of hormone replacement theory, estrogenic th uh, therapy. Yeah, you know. but you can stop those and be like... Well, that's the question, right? Uh, there's a lot of detransitioners that are speaking out that are not able to restart. You know, puberty is not an assembly line that you could just push a button and well, restart. That is a increasingly disproven scientific theory right now. Chloe Cole is the, one of the most famous detransitioners who she's in her 20s and she was sold a bill of goods and when she was 16 she said I think I'm a man and she went on a very very aggressive regimen of hormone blockers and puberty blockers um, and she has huge regret and hopefully one day she'll be able to have you know have children again but it gets back to a question of can so I'm just making a point, though, that these, these ideas have consequences. It's more than just a silly question. Oh, what is mm -hmm. a woman? That if you can't answer it, or at the very least say that you should allow minors to become adults before they make these decisions, then, and this is not a small thing, the quote-unquote gender-affirming care. We know that in California you have to be 18 years old to get a tattoo, mm -hmm. and yet 14-year-olds can go to what we call a doctor and get a highly aggressive hormone replacement therapy treatment, sometimes without even notifying their parent. I and all of these are ramifications of the inability to answer very simple biological questions. I would be interested in seeing your exact like study or citation for when it comes to like puberty blockers because I know a lot of people, or not a lot of people, there's a lot of people who end up on puberty blockers not because they're necessarily trans but because they're going through puberty too early and there are clear like negative side effects and consequences of let's say like a 10 year old girl getting her that's period. A, that's a separate I, you're right. That's, yeah, but that it's used right. on cis children. I think like what you're talking but about it, is precocious puberty. But it's it's so. not used on perfectly healthy, physically able body children, right? Mm -hmm. So to, there's a great book that I'll I guess we have. Modest to do this, Hikima but. donated two hundred dollars. Charlie, sorry you had to travel to California for the show. My boy, did you dirty by putting you next to the demon? WTF? I don't think Beautiful you're a demon, life. by the way. Props on the oh, new you Rick Rickson. Okay, well, maybe you are you a demon. May Christ see you are brain dead. Sad. Sad. 
All right, see, Modest I, Akama, okay. good to see you what, in the what, chat. I, I will just, I'll reference one book, and she's a non-political doctor. Her doctor's doc, her name is Dr. Miriam Grossman. It's a book called Lost in Transnation. She has, she has treated, not just theorized. She's a clinician and a physician, not just someone who writes abstract medical journals. And she is one of the most outspoken people against what is called gender affirming care. And she she's treating hundreds of kids that are now so damaged I know by this. detransitioners exist. But what do you say to the thousands of trans people that actually report happiness and, and being healthy after they receive gender affirming care? Don't don't doubt that in the short term testosterone therapy te from someone who has a fair amount of testosterone, it can, act, it can make you feel confident, it can make you feel better in your skin. That is not a lasting effect though. Is that think? But it is for some people. Well, well you'd be, I, the suicide rate, I can't say that word. Um, this, sorry, the self-harm rate after eight to 10 years actually goes up, it nearly doubles. And we're still studying it, that's the other point is that I'm not gonna throw around a lot of studies here, um, and they, they very well might be right. It might have helped them individually, but l let me give you an example. If a medication is on the market and it harms one in 250,000 people, for example, Robitussin. You guys ever take Robitussin? No. No, it's a cough thing. It's, mm. you know, they, they, they found that one of their lots of Robitussin last week might have been contaminated and they did a massive recall, right? And it was so it, 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 just recalled. a whisper of it, okay? The point that is in medicine, the first rule used to be first do no harm. And the fact still is right. No, they've changed the it, Hippocratic so. Oath. It's they've changed it. Yeah, they have. Who's they? The American Medical Association and a lot of the the medical institutions. Um, it's they've similar, been but it's not by the same. like woke ideology. Well, you'd be surprised actually. The med the medical industry has been taken over by a lot of radical. All doctors forces. are woke now. Well, for example, I mean, when they were giving monoclonal antibodies in the city of New York, they were prioritizing people based on the color of their skin. Um, black individuals in New York got monoclonal antibodies above their white counterparts. Was but it based on the color of their skin or like maybe their background related to like their socioeconomic status? It was, it was racial, um, but I don't want to get too deep into that yeah. rabbit hole. But the point that I'm just trying to make is that in medicine in particular, you must have a cautious approach, even if there were pluses and positives, which might very well be true. If there's even a 1%, a 2% adverse event, you pull the drug immediately because you first do no harm. If there's something that is actively damaging a society, and it's now a certifiable um, fact that we see thousands of young kids are being told that they can transition, when in reality they have other underlying issues that we should address. Depression, trauma, anxiety, or they're on the autism spectrum disorder, and they get mislabeled on whether a TikTok video or some sort of other thing makes them feel as if they might have you know, a transgender issue I when agree. they very well might have other issues that need to be addressed. One in 27 men are aut uh, young boys are autistic. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I don't mean no, to- No, to to totally fine. Yeah. I just had a quick question for you two since you guys had pretty strong positions on this. Can men get pregnant? Oh, Grid okay. One Hold Motorsports on. donated $200. If we want to talk numbers, then honesty requires we first admit that gender dysphoria is a mental condition which should be treated first before any physical treatments are given. Accuracy matters. All right, Grid One Motorsports. They no longer Appreciate call it. it gender dysphoria, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I just want to I would what, actually make you know your argument they, for you. They, 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 call, um, they don't even call it a medical condition. Mm -hmm. they, they call it, um, I actually don't even know what it's actually called. Gender dysphoria used to be the clinical term, um, mm -hmm. but- um, They've changed it since. So yeah, that's, that's right. But I can go deeper into that. The, the old way we used to tr treat this is called watchful waiting, where we believed that puberty was the solution, not the problem. And almost every single case, and Europe was actually the pioneer of this, is that when you allow puberty to play its course, these individuals, they might end up being lesbian or gay, but not transgender. And that's a completely different thing that doesn't require hormones or eventually antidepressants on top of it. I'm sorry, Pixie, you were gonna say something. So. Yeah, my question was, can men get I'm pregnant? I, um, two things, I would say if you're a biological male, if we're gonna define male through biology or whatever, then no. Um, I do wanna push back on some things that I heard earlier. Um, well, before you do that, go ahead, Aaron, do you have a answer to the I would say yes because anybody who has a uterus has the capacity to give birth so mm, for okay. example a trans guy who gets pregnant yes would be a man who is pregnant but if you're talking about a man who is assigned man at birth and does not have a uterus then no okay. he doesn't have the ability to get pregnant you're, you're looking at me like I'm crazy or what do you disagree but a lot of women so do you want to know why young men are going away from the left that's why young men are leaving the left why? Because <laughs> what you just said is because they're uncomfortable acknowledging reality. What you that just, some trans men can what, get pregnant. What it's you like, just said is at war with reality, and you know, massacring. I mean, a lot of women um, can't get pregnant either. So that that, yeah, exactly. It's just a question. It's just a question. You know, okay. um, yeah. 
I'll let you come in in just a sec, Pixie. I, which one of you referenced chromosomes? Is that well? You said like, oh, none, you didn't check our chromosomes, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, people understood what a woman was before chromosomes were discovered. Um, so the the definition does not require this type of abstraction. People understood what a woman was on the basis of the societal norms at the time, generally speaking, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's more Which precisely, answer, it's about yeah. like the gonads. If you were at any point in your life going to produce large gametes, then you're a woman. They, how society, at least most societies as well, outside of like Western as well, but even Western, we can make this argument. Okay. Um, what they would look at is the way that a person is like necessarily performing. Mm. So what is their role? That's why you have like the idea of like non-binary, third gender, et cetera, et cetera, because there have been people also who have not performed their role as like a male or female. So they're put sure. into the third category, third sex, whatever. Okay. Um, so I would argue that for the vast majority of um, human histories and societies, what they look at is what is your performance? Mm -hmm. And that maps on to what we do now because we don't really look at biology, we look at people act. You and that's why, mm -hmm. let me finish. Go ahead. That's why we also, the terms less manly, he's less of a man than him, or she's not that womanly, makes sense. If gender was truly a binary, those words would make no sense. It would be like cat and not cat. That doesn't, you can't have a in between really. And the same thing applies for gender. There is a spectrum there. That's why the, set, the words less womanly, more womanly, more manly, less manly make sense to us. And all of those things are fluid throughout time. Like what constituted like masculine tendencies or behaviors will be different now than it was several years ago. Or even like things like colors. Like for example, pink used to be considered a masculine color. Pink is no longer really considered a masculine color. It's considered a feminine color. So there was never anything inherently masculine about the color blue or, or the color pink or anything like that that could always change at any given point in time. Do, do you think that male brains and female brains or men and women brains are different? Wired yeah. differently? There are differences between male and female brains, but I believe it's a matter of like statistical averages of like gray matter. There's not going to be like distinct anatomical features that differentiate a female brain from a male brain. Really? Okay. A, yeah, no, you, you really. You really think that? Well, no, it's proven like scientifically. Well, like no, when we take not. yes, it no. is. When we take a brain scan of a male and female, um, the average doctor can't look and be like, that is a male brain well, right there. Not true. Now, no, no, hold on. Wait, if, if wait, you, let if me you do a spec sentence, scan, please. okay, if you do a spec scan, you can see what parts of the brain light up. And in a woman, the basal ganglia and the amygdala is far more active, which is the inner thought matrix. Women have a far busier inner thought life than men do. Would you guys agree with that? I agree. Right. I okay. was going to say it's, it's very. So that's not true. It's very wait, well known that like finish. men. Um, generally are more on the logical side of things and women are more on the emotional mm -hmm. side of things and I think that has a big role or the way that our brains are wired has a big role to play I'm not saying that if you took babies who were completely unmolded that you know their brains would look different but um, I think as we age um, living the living in the gender that we are given um, you know our brains become attuned to certain things and that's why yeah. Parts of our yeah, like piggybacking up. off of that yeah. point, I don't doubt that the studies that you looked at did find differences in like brain mapping scans between men and women, but the key thing is that they looked at men and women. So that's already a brain that's been subjected to a lifetime, or well, not a lifetime, but like decades long so socialization. You, so that socialization is going sure. to impact it. If you looked Sorry, at like interrupt. a brain yeah. scan of like infants, for example, like a male infant and a female infant, it would be um, like, like how much how different would it really so, look? Do you think it would look significantly different? No, it's not even close. It's, of course it's different. And I can I can prove it to you in two ways. But the first one, do you guys know the John Money gender yeah. experiment? No. So, okay, I'll just, really quick. John Money, who is a total creep, he uh, believed that, pe this is before we mapped the human genome. Okay, this is before we even knew about chromosomes. He said that men and women are blank slates at birth, and he said that it, they're formed through the toys we give them, the colors we appropriate to them, and they're blank slates. He then, there was these identical twins. One of the twins, twins burns themselves terribly in the genitals, and he said, raise that twin as a girl. And basically his entire life he was tortured and, you know, awful, awful story, eventually rebelled against John Money. And this twin eventually was told that, hey, you were born a boy but raised as a girl and even had a, va a vagina put onto you artificially. And he was like, instead of being mad, he was relieved because he said, I knew I was a boy all along. So there's no clinical evidence to support that. Secondly, though, it's a funnier one, okay? Do you hear me out? And I think this will resonate with all of you. Harvard University locked a group of men in a room alone, 100 of them, and a group of women in a room alone, okay? And they said, what did you think about for 30 minutes? The men, no surprise, sex and sports. The young ladies, what did they think of for 30 minutes? They replayed conversations that they had in the last couple of days. Real. For the record, 
a man has never replayed conversations you that guys they've had. Do that? Mm-hmm. Our I do that brains, all the time. our I brains are different. Everybody, do you really not do that. I feel like I overthink. No, of everything. course not. You don't <laughs> think about conversations. Make, you've you never had like a shower arguments or like shower thoughts or anything no. like that. No, <laughs> and that's not society, my friend. That is biology. You are wired to have those rethought. We aren't. It's not a learned behavior. It's not about dolls. It's not about dresses. Our biology, our brains are made differently. You really don't think never anyone's about disputing that we after. have like different. We don't yeah, replay no, any conversations. Ever. Men don't. You've never that, like the, done that. The thing. Am where I trans? Because sometimes I, I'm. Sometimes <laughs> I will. <laughs> you gotta go on. Hold very on rarely, blockers. though. Yeah. R- very rarely. Sometimes, mm-hmm. occasionally. We men I'll are very forward thinking. What is next? The job, the interview, tomorrow. And not saying women aren't. Women are very reflective. Mm-hmm. That's why f- females are better at poetry. Uh, women are better at the more relational uh, type aspects of being a nurse or an elementary school teacher. Again, that's not learned behavior. There is a biological element to it. And it starts with, we don't even understand the brain as much as we can. We understand like 1% of 1% of it. But I think that study and your reaction affirms it because if I had a group of men around you, like, what do you think of when you're alone? Like, I just think of the NFC championship game, the stock market, and you know, all the women I've been with or the women I want to be with. It's a little different. Do you think if they had conducted the study in a different country that the men and women would have given these same answers? Uh, Yes, I think that these things um, are universal. And I mean, I can't say to that, that would be my speculation, Mm. that uh, the men in Iran are thinking about soccer and Persian women, and the women are thinking about, you know, what's going on in their local neighborhood. These things transcend continent, they transcend culture. And we know that because one of the arguments that you were making is that, well, you know, at the fundamental root, these are learned and act, you know, these are, uh, these are put on by Western society, but you go into African villages, like very poor third world African villages, they don't even have a term for transgender. The idea that a man can become a woman or a woman can become man, this is a uniquely Western phenomenon that is born out of the academy, born out of college, that I will say, and I think we could agree, is, is largely they prey on people that have other underlying issues and then it gets built on top of that. Autism spectrum disorder, depression, anxiety, some other sort of um, bipolar, schizophrenia, think trauma, things of that nature. Um, there's a couple of things to push back here. Brian. If you can, quick. I, I, I don't, if you can, I don't quick. mean to monopolize. I'm sorry, Pixie. No, it's yeah. okay. Um, there's a couple of things. I do want to push back on that because like, there are like communities and cultures that we could search up right now in China, India, various like Native American like histories that have recognized the idea of like third gender or outside gender um, that doesn't fit into this binary. So I wouldn't say it's just Western. That, that is and then true. on top Wait, of let that. Wait, let them answer. No, but no, the, I'm, <laughs> you, no, you please continue. You are right. I can address that at length. I don't think it's fruitful. Okay, keep okay, going. Go okay. You're not wrong. And then on top of that, you gave a case study. I kind of want to give a case study back. Um, NPR did a article on this. I can't remember the name, but basically it was about a person who felt gender fluid. And when they felt like they were a man and they did things like spatial recognition or other tests regarding that they would score like Amanda is like higher than most women but when they got into the mindset of being a woman they would score higher in women related tasks so yeah it does come back you're saying like this is all predisposed um, biology 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 but there might be something to be said about like oh no if you're thinking like a man the mindset of a man maybe that's more in tune with certain ways of thinking versus thinking like a woman that doesn't mean it's all 100% biological basis it means that like hey if you're raised to think in a certain pattern you're going to perform in that oh, pattern I, I agree I mean if a society a society can mold you of course but you're dealing with very powerful raw material that's underestimated in the current cultural conversation and you can only guide that raw material so much so let me ask another hypothetical i'll just tell you if i sit down with men what what do they always talk about they talk about macro concepts big things stock market sports you know things that are very you know like let's just say bigger than individual women if you sit down they'll talk a lot about conversations or relationships their kids very micro this, you know, one of the reasons why men and women brains are different and they continue to be different is there's different skill sets. And I think we can all acknowledge that. Like men are better at some things than women and women, women are better at some things than men. I don't know why that is a wildly but, contra- The way that you frame it is like, oh, women are awesome at like small talk and like sewing or whatever. And then men are just awesome at like the stock market well, and being CEOs. Let me ask, let me ask like, you a question. But hold on. Are, but hold on. Why, why is it, let me ask you a question. Why is it that the International Chess Foundation doesn't want biological men who, th- who believe they are women to compete with women. They say that will not allow trans men into the female category. Why is that? I can't speak to that, but I'm just, if you're going to talk about like representation being the thing that lets you know that, oh, men are obviously smarter, you could break this down never to race. Sm- I never said smarter. I never said smart. I said different. 
than different. Women, okay, then we could say this. My wife does things with my child that I, I can't even dream of doing, such as having an intuition, compassion, empathy. She can operate on 30 minutes of sleep. I need eight hours or else I'm like a dead. Don't dep- underestimate yourself, Charlie. Hold I on think a second. No, 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 hold on. No, they, they're, w- w- women have a different giftedness, I believe, given by God that is completely different men. I never said smarter. In fact, a woman's intuition is far better than my intuition. I trust my, my wife's gut when it comes to people, when it comes to relationships. And she leans on me for you know investments or politics. We are given different gifting. Now, with that being said, some women have a gifting in that direction. Those are the exception, though. There is a general rule, and the general rule is that women are far more gifted at people and caretaking and the intimate. I don't mean that demeaning or derogatory. I never use the word smarter or dumber. I that you might, be, you might be inferred. Oh, thank you, Molly. Yeah. No, I, I actually very much agree with what you're saying. Um, me, personally, I mean, sexuality is a big part of my life. Um, and I think what you're saying actually really ties into a lot of, like, sexuality because... It's the man's role to be, um, you know, kind of like the, I mean, if you're talking like the nuclear family, you know, it's like the man's role to kind of be the governing force of the family, take care of everything on the outside, take care of, uh, you know, the, the finances, the stocks, mm-hmm. all of that, and to kind of be the, the rock for all of the mm-hmm. um, little things that the woman has to go through during the day. Um, just all the little conversations, all the things that she has to deal with that you're not there. And I think that, um, you know, it's a really beautiful thing, like yin and yang, you know, like there's, it is there's beautiful. parts of men that compliment women and there's parts of women that compliment men. And the best thing is, is there's things that women can do that men cannot. And there's things that men mm. can do that women cannot. And I think that the issue is we try and figure out like who's better, what, who's more powerful, who can, you know, who gets to say uh, what happens. And I think that the issue, that's really dividing and the beauty comes when you kind of bring those skills mm. together. I, I agree. That's wonderfully said, Molly. That was beautiful, Molly. Let me switch to something really quick. We do have two chats we have to read, then we'll come back to this co- topic. 